Hello, and welcome back to the Unchewed Potato National Parks podcast. Hello, hello, welcome back to the National Parks podcast on the Unchewed Potato channel. Today we have a guest speaker. This is Luna. <laughs> no, she probably won't be joining us very long, but this is my six month old kitten, Luna. We call her Luna Bear, Tiny Cat. She has a lot of different names, but she's adorable and she wanted to come join me in my filming area today. So here she is for all of 10 seconds before she, yep, goes crazy. So today's episode is going to be about Hot Springs National Park in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I visited this park back last year. Actually, we just went for a weekend in February. So I'm gonna tell you about that experience, whether I would recommend this time of year or not. Luna just bumped the camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting episode with her up here filming with me. So Hot Springs National Park is about a seven hour drive from where I live in Kentucky. So my boyfriend and I last February, I think it was actually Valentine's Day weekend, we both had been working straight for like two or three months. Like we'd hardly had any days off at all. And we both happened to have a weekend off in February together. And so we were like, you know what? Let's go do something fun. So Hot Springs had been on my list for quite a while. In case you don't know, I do have a goal of visiting all 63 of America's national parks. There are 63 currently as of March, 2024. That will probably change, I'm assuming in the next few years. I assume by the time I'm done with all the 63 current parks, there's probably gonna be more, but that's my goal is to visit all the national parks. So since I live in Kentucky, my goal was to kind of conquer the ones east of the Mississippi first and then kind of delve into the west because flying out there is kind of expensive. It's going to have to be done over multiple trips for us. I'm going to do a whole episode later on like how I've planned my trips so far and how I'm planning my future trips. But this was kind of the idea was that we go to all the parks east of the Mississippi. So Hot Springs was like pretty much next on the list by that point. And so we just decided, you know what, let's just go do it. So we woke up, I think at like 4 a.m. <laughs> on the first day and drove seven hours west, slightly southwest, I guess, to Hot Springs, Arkansas. Now they are on central time, whereas we're on eastern time here in Kentucky. So we kind of gained an hour going back. So we actually got there around 10 a.m. their time. Like I said, we left around 4 a.m. our time. So we gained that hour going back. So it was really like seven hours on the road, but only six hours on the clock, so to speak. So we got there about 10 a.m. The visitor center and everything was open by that point. I think that's why we decided to leave at four. That I don't think most things open until like nine or 10 anyway. So we were like, you know what? We'll just leave early that morning, no need to drive down the night before or anything like that. Now, the cool thing about Hot Springs National Park, if you don't know any of the history, it's where hot water is pumped from the ground, from the natural springs, and actually there it comes out of the ground at 144 degrees Fahrenheit. And historically it was pumped into these bathhouses where people would bathe in the mineral water and it was believed to have healing properties and help with all sorts of health issues. And this would have been back well over a hundred years ago in the early 1900s, probably historically even before that, I'm sure people bathed in public bathhouses. But two of these bathhouses have actually been preserved as modern bathhouses in Hot Springs. And all of the other historic bathhouses there are still preserved in some way. So they call this street Bathhouse Row, where all of these old historic bathhouses are in Hot Springs National Park. And one of the old bathhouses has been transformed into the current visitor center. However, I had looked online ahead of time and seen that this visitor center was going to be closed for a remodel. So they had moved the visitor center like to a temporary location at a different bathhouse. So unfortunately, we did not get to go in that bathhouse and see the original visitor center, which I believe is back up and running fully now. It just was when we went, it just happened to be closed, but they had moved the temporary visitor center to the cultural center. So we got to go in and see all of the artwork of the artists and residents, and it was still a really, really nice experience, even though like we didn't get to see the exhibits and like I'm sure there was like a museum and whatnot, but it was still really cool. So we got there, we found some free parking. I had again done my research, of course, and there is a huge free parking garage like directly across the street from Bathhouse Row. Like you cross the street and actually I guess it's maybe technically another street over, but then there's just like this huge free public parking garage there. So we parked there, walked over. It was chilly. It was definitely chilly in February, but we knew this going, going into it. 
So we had packed accordingly. We were prepared with our cold weather hiking gear and whatnot. So we went and checked out this bathhouse row, got to see the cultural center where the temporary visitor center was. There was another bathhouse that had been preserved as like a little gift shop. So we went in there. We actually ended up buying a clear growler because one of the really cool parts about this park is that you can fill up your own containers at the springs and I'll get to that in a minute. So we had brought some containers of our own but this was like this really cool clear growler so like 64 ounces and like you, like you put craft beer in <laughs> and it had like the hot springs logo and everything on it and it was like 10 bucks or so like you know what souvenir let's do it and usually we don't do that at national parks. I, I get my stamp and my stamp book I get a token if they have it and for so this is for like the minor parks I'll get a token and then for the major parks I get a pin for my cork board other than that I really don't buy a lot of merch I did buy t-shirts like at the first few parks we went to but I have way too many t-shirts now so I don't really buy a lot of souvenirs we were like this is worth it so we just kind of spent the morning there walking around bathhouse row most of the bathhouses we just kind of checked out from the street like I said we did go in the the visitor center slash cultural center and we did go in the gift shop but we knew we had plans for the next day, so I'll get into that in just a second. So after that, we did drive up like the main park road called, I think it's just called Hot Springs Mountain Tower Road, <laughs> and we drove up that to Hot Springs Mountain Tower. Now this is absolutely worth visiting if you're going to that area. I'll be honest, there really isn't a lot to do in this national park outside of the bathhouses and a few trails. So this definitely added a really cool activity to our trip and it allowed us to see the whole area and this is not actually run by MPS this is a concessioner of the national park system but it's definitely worth the visit if you're going to go to hot springs if you're going to go all the way there you might as well get I think the ticket up to the tower is maybe like 10 bucks I don't think it was super expensive and we spent a couple hours there so we drove up all the way to this tower I'm sorry this kitten is driving me nuts today <laughs> baby calm down if you hear scrambling and rustling and everything in the background of this podcast, this is definitely, this is definitely the culprit, this tiny cat right here. She's got the full on zoomies this morning. So anyway, we drove around that road and it kind of switches back around up the mountain and there's plenty of parking up there once you get to the tower and then you enter down like in the gift shop area and there's all kinds of stuff of course down there that you can buy i think if you don't have tickets already you can buy them there but i got ahead and bought them ahead of time just because i wanted to make sure that you know we were able to get in that day and i honestly don't remember if our tickets had an entry time i don't believe they did i think they were good for the whole day so we just kind of got there when we got there and i think you're able to spend as much time up at the top of the tower once you get up there as you want so like your ticket gets you entry for however many hours I'm pretty sure that you want. So you could go I guess first thing in the morning and stay till they close. I don't think they would have a problem with that. So we took the elevator to the top of the tower because it was so cold outside. They do have a stairs option. If you prefer you could walk the entire tower. And we thought about it, we talked about it, and then we were like, mm, we got some hiking to do. <laughs> It's chilly. Let's just take the elevator and enjoy the ride. I'll be honest, I'm not a big elevator person, so normally I probably would have chosen the stairs just to get the view of everything from the outside of the tower. And I don't really have a problem with heights, so I, I think I would have actually enjoyed seeing the tower from the outside on the stairs. But we chose to do the elevator that day and just kind of enjoy ourselves. And so once you get to the top, there's two different decks. So the lower deck is like enclosed. So that was really, really nice because you could see everything from the tower you know in safety and also in warmth <laughs> so that was really nice we spent some time there but there's just only so much you can see through plexiglass so we went on up to the top level and that is completely open I mean it's protected like you have like barriers and stuff around you you're not going to fall off the tower like you would have to try really really hard to fall off the top of this tower um, but it is a little more unnerving if you're not into heights uh, but if you if you are able to I would definitely recommend that you go to the the top deck and see everything in open air you could pretty much see the whole town around from that tower I mean you could see for miles and the really cool thing about Hot Springs National Park is it's an urban national park so you're right there in the middle of town like you're in the middle of I mean it's not a city it's a small town but you're right there in the middle of this town and then suddenly you see all of these they're small mountains I mean they're not mountain mountains but they're they're little hills and so you can see all of this beautiful nature around you it's just definitely something I would recommend doing if you don't have a fear of heights so after that we drove our way back down the mountain I think there are some trails that run through that area if you were doing like a through hike through the park or you just wanted to hike a little bit on the top of hot springs mountain I do believe that you can but most of the trails are 
outside of that main downtown area. So we drove out to a point that had some parking. I wouldn't really necessarily call it a trailhead. I guess it technically is, but it was really just like a little parking area. We crossed the street and hopped onto Sunset Trail, which is kind of one of the main trails that runs through the park. And we hiked out to what I had researched as a point of interest called Balanced Rock. And this was really, really cool. We were, we were pretty tired by this point because we'd been driving all morning. We obviously hadn't slept very long. And so we're probably like close to a mile into this hike. And I had in my research found that it was about a mile out to the Balanced Rock. And so we're like getting close and I'm looking at all these big rocks and I'm like, oh, is that the balanced rock? No, that's not the balanced rock. And we just kind of kept goofing around doing that. And then all of a sudden we rounded this corner and I see this rock that looks like if you just went up to it and went boop, it would just fall down the side of the mountain. Obviously it won't, but that's what it looked like. And we were both just like, oh, that's the balanced rock. So it was definitely worth the hike out there. It was a beautiful day. Like I said, it was chilly, but it was a beautiful day. It was very sunny. And so it was definitely worth the trip out there to see this rock that looked like you could just push it off the side of the mountain. And then after that, we drove around again to another little parking area on way out of town. Like this was way, way, almost on the outskirts of the National Park. And we ended up hiking to the summit of Music Mountain. Now this also was like a two mile round trip hike. Like this was not anything super strenuous either, but it was called Music Mountain and I'm a musician. So we just, we had to do it just because when we got to the summit, it was kind of anticlimactic. Like there wasn't, there was a little geological marker, but there wasn't really anything else to tell us that we'd reached the summit. But we knew we had reached the summit because there was nothing else around us. We were on the highest point. It wasn't even really clear. You couldn't even really see anything from the summit, but we had a good time anyway. We found some like really cool, I don't know if it was shale or what kind of rocks it was, but we found um, some really neat rocks on that hike. And obviously we left them. We just took pictures. Do not ever remove anything from a national park. But after a full day of driving and hiking and seeing sights, we just wanted to relax. Now we are craft beer drinkers and I know a lot of people that do hiking in national parks, we're all into it. So if you also are into craft beer, this is a must do for a hot springs national park trip. So one of the old bathhouses, they have transformed it into a brewery and they call it Superior Bathhouse Brewing. And they actually use the hot springs water to brew their beer. So the water from the natural hot springs there is used to brew all of their beer and it's really really neat you go in and like the floors are all still preserved and you just I mean you honestly do feel like you're drinking beer in a bathhouse but it's really really neat and most craft breweries do flights and for most breweries it's like four to five small beers so you can try several different things without having to order a bunch of pints and feeling incapacitated to drive or function otherwise but they have their what they call a beer bath and honestly, I would not have done this had they not marketed it so well, but it was all 18 of their beers on tap in like little four ounce glasses. And so my boyfriend was with me. I don't think you could do this alone. I mean, maybe some people could really, it's like four and a half beers. It's not that much, but like, it'd be like four and a half pints essentially. But we did eat dinner and we together shared the beer bath. And even though we had had food, we were not feeling confident in driving to our campground at that point in time. So we chose to stay and walk around for a little bit longer so that we could safely drive to our campground. And so we walked the Grand Promenade, which is a really, really nice, super, super wide, like brick paved trail up behind Bathhouse Row. So you have Bathhouse Row, like down the, the main road through Hot Springs. I think it was called Central Avenue, like the main road down through Hot Springs National Park. And that has a really, really wide sidewalk as well. Like you can very, very easily walk that. It's very accessible. But then up behind that, kind of on the hillside, it kind of like scoops over and behind Bathhouse Row is what they call the Grand Promenade. And that was really, really nice. It was evening by that point. So it was dusky. It was getting dark by the time we walked that up. It was well lit. The area felt very, very safe. We didn't have any issues walking at night and feeling like we were threatened or we were unsafe or anything like that. And like I said, it was very, very well lit. We could walk that entire path and we, we were able to see everything. And we weren't alone up there either. There were other people that seemed to be locals that were walking the path. So there were a few points where you could just sit if you wanted to. You could kind of overlook the downtown area. It was beautiful. There were a couple of areas where you could actually see water bubbling out of the hot springs. 
So that was really, really neat. We actually stood, it was like kind of fenced in. So of course you didn't fall into the 144 degree water, but you could kind of overlook one of the actual springs, like one of the sources of water. And that water was rushing out of that spring, kind of almost creating like a waterfall that you could view from down below, kind of at the end of Bathhouse Row. So it was just a beautiful evening. We sobered up and <laughs> drove on to our campground and we chose to stay. There is one campground in the park and it's called Gulf of Gorge Campground. So we chose to stay there. We pitched our tent. We had our, you know, zero degree rated sleeping bags and everything. So we were warm. We were snuggly and everything was fine. And I actually learned a little camping tip on this trip. We had already filled up our growlers, our jugs with the, the spring water. And so it was 144 degrees when it came out of the ground. So we each stuck a bottle in the bottom of our sleeping bags, obviously like folded up. I think we folded up in like clothes or something. So that water wasn't directly touching our skin, like even through the bottle, but that heat radiated throughout our sleeping bags all night and kept us super warm. So if you're camping, boil some water, put it in a, a water bottle that of course is rated to hold hot water and put it at the base of your sleeping bag and that heat will radiate through your bag all night and keep you toasty and warm. So yeah, back to what I said about filling our jugs with the spring water. We had done that at some point the day before, I can't remember at what point during the day we did that, but they have several hot springs where the water actually comes out of the ground at 144 degrees and they have spouts, like they've they've made it all modernized where you can like pull the, the spigot and fill up your, your jug with the hot water but they also have a couple of cold springs as well. So we had stopped and filled up our bottles with the cold spring water for hiking and just for, for drinking. And then we had saved the hot water again for our sleeping bags. And we were just gonna take it home with us because we did all this research where, again, the, the water is very good to bathe in because of its healing properties, but it's also very wonderful to drink. So we wanted to pack quite a few containers of water with us back to Kentucky to have this water to drink, you know, just for a couple weeks. And it just tasted really good too. So we wanted to, bring a lot of that water, as much of that water as we could back to Kentucky with us. So we filled up some of the cold springs and then we filled up some of the hot springs as well. And those springs are free and available to anyone. While we were there, we noticed a lot of locals that were pulling up and they had like those huge, huge, like five gallon jugs and like multiple ones of them. And they were standing there at the spring for 20, 30 minutes, probably close to an hour for some of them. And they were these families in these vans and they were coming and they were filling up their all their jugs. And I guarantee you that was their family's source of water for the week or for the month or whatever it was, because you could just tell these were locals that were coming to fill up huge, huge, like multiple huge containers. So that was really interesting to see too. And it's good to know that the locals are obviously taking advantage of that constantly flowing spring water and using its healing properties and wonderful minerals and all that good stuff. So after our wonderful night at the Gulf of Gorge campground, we departed pretty early the next morning. We woke up with the sunrise. That's another thing that I I guess I both like and hate about camping is I'm always down with the sun, but then I'm up with it the next morning. I'm not usually that way in normal life. <laughs> I get up a little later than that and go to bed later than that usually. But with camping, it's hard to find things to do once the sun sets. So we were up pretty early the next morning, I think like 6 or 7 a.m. And we were starving and we were a little chilly. I mean, like we were warm in our sleeping bags, but once we got up, you know, went to the bathroom and started getting ready, we got a little chilly. I mean, it was, it was pretty, pretty cold out there. I would say it was in the thirties and we were pretty hungry by this point because we had eaten dinner fairly early the night before at the brewery. So we were like, let's find some breakfast. So we found a local little breakfast place. It was literally called the pancake shop <laughs> and it was downtown in hot springs. So we drove back down the mountain and had breakfast there. It was an absolutely wonderful breakfast. It was probably one of the best breakfasts I've ever had out anywhere. And it was so neat. The place was like Kentucky Derby themed. And our server was telling us that like, I guess the owner of the restaurant also owns horses and races those horses. So he's very into the Derby. I guess he'd maybe had some Derby horses or something. I can't remember the specifics of that, but it was really neat. Like we're in Arkansas, which is not that far from Kentucky, but like we're away from home visiting a national park and we look all around and there's like Kentucky Derby <laughs> posters and pictures and stuff all around us. So that was, we felt like we'd picked the right spot. So after that breakfast though, we were just kind of killing time around town because obviously we'd already checked out the campground and we were waiting for one of the bathhouses to open. And like I said before, nothing really opens there till like nine or 10 o'clock. So what we were waiting for was the Quapaw, I hope I'm saying that right, bathhouse to 
open because they have public thermal pools. Now you can set up appointments for like private baths with a bath attendant and all of that fancy stuff, but we wanted to experience the bathhouses like they would have been experienced historically. And we thought the best way to do that was with these public thermal pools. Now, obviously back in the day, you would have just gone to the bathhouses nude if you preferred. There they do require swimwear. So you do have to have on like proper swimwear and rubber shoes so you don't fall and all that good stuff. So it was obviously not as free and flowing as it would have been back in the day. But I just thought that would be a really nice way to experience sort of what the bathhouses would have been originally. So we walked around downtown, just kind of milled around there. Again, there's not much else to see there unless you're gonna set out for a long hike. But we kind of walked around the downtown, uh, saw some little local shops and walked around the Grand Promenade again, walked up and down Bathhouse Row. I think we did end up going back in the gift shop again because it opened at nine, but the bathhouse didn't open till 10. So we were just kind of waiting around there for things to open, but we noticed there were some other people waiting as well, kind of on the porch of the bathhouse. So we just kind of went up and joined them and sat there for a little bit. And then once the bathhouse opened, you go in, you pay your admission, I think it's like 25 bucks for like the whole day. And they do have really, really nice locker rooms and like showering and bathroom facilities for men and women. And so you can go in there and change and do whatever you need to do before you ever even go into the, the public pool area. And once you get in there, there is hot water and cold water that is, you know, the actual spring water that the attendants have out there for you. They have endless towels, it seems. There's actually a little cafe in there, so we had some lunch and some coffee. And the pools, there are four different pools that are four different temperatures. So you can start in the back if you want. That pool that kind of runs across the top in the back is a cooler temperature. And then there's three different temperatures down below. So you can choose kind of a medium temperature. I think it was the middle one that day that was the hottest. And they post, like they have a little sign that shows like what the temperatures are that day. So obviously the water comes out of the ground at 144 degrees Fahrenheit. You do not want to get in that water at that temperature. So they will also pump cold water in from the cold springs as well to even that temperature and make it bearable to get in. So I guess just the temperatures vary depending on how much of the cold water is pumped pumped in to mix in with that 144 degree water. So that was really nice. We relaxed there for honestly at least a couple of hours and then we were like, well, I guess we better hit the road and drive on home because again, we had that seven hour drive ahead of us, which actually turned into eight hours of time on the way back. I think we left there around like noon or one. And so obviously that put us home at like eight or 9 p.m. and we both had to work the next day. So would I recommend doing hot springs in a weekend? Yes and no. I would have preferred maybe to have like a four day span to spend there or at least three days maybe. One just for driving, one for enjoying the park, and then maybe like another to do a little something in the morning, kind of like we did and then drive home. Or honestly, you could spend two full days in the park and then have two full days for, for travel. It just really depends on how far away you are and it depends on if you're doing this as like a one-off trip like we did or if you're passing through. So you could do that park easily in two days. I wouldn't recommend any less than two days because I do believe that you need to experience some of the trails and the, the mountain tower. And if you drink beer, I would definitely say that is worth experiencing to go to that brew house. We have a cat <laughs> here on this shelf. And then I would recommend setting aside another whole day to do the bathhouse experience. There is another bathhouse there called Buckstaff Bathhouse. We didn't actually go in that one. We just felt like we didn't have the time. And again, you kind of get the same experience, I guess, at one bathhouse that you would get at the other. But that one does not have public thermal pools. They're more focused on like the spa experience. So you can set up appointments there and do, uh, I think they have all kinds of services, but you can do like a private bath there and do a full massage and all, all kinds of that good spa stuff. So you could do like a spa day and then you could do like an exploring day. And I think that would probably be enough to experience most of that park. So will we go back to hot springs? Possibly. We have realized since that trip that in every other national park, we took a picture together, my boyfriend and I, by the National Park sign. And at that park, we did not. Now this was not necessarily like a mission we had. I know some people do that. They wanna take a picture at every National Park sign. This was not necessarily something that we were starting out to do. But now that we've realized we have a picture at every other park that we've been to together, but that one, we're like, mm, we might need to do something about that. So at some point, we are going to have to go to Oklahoma. Long story short, in the process of our visits to the 63 national parks, we will have visited 49 states together. So we gotta go to Oklahoma at some point, just because. So we have considered passing back through hot springs, either on our way there or on our way back. 
grabbing that picture at the sign and maybe visiting Buckstaff Bathhouse just to do a little spa day in the midst of our road trip. So yes, it's possible that we may go back, but honestly, I think we both feel as though we experienced most of what there is to experience in that park on that first trip. So that pretty much wraps up today's episode. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I do want to start doing Q&A segments at the end of future podcast episodes. So if you have any questions specific to this park or just to national park travels in general, feel free to leave them below and I will see you guys in the next episode. Happy trails.